There have been moments in time where scholars paused their hustle and bustle to reflect on the history of our ancient world. They cultivate retellings of events from our past in order to study our mistakes and create progress for a better future. This is not one of those moments. This is Drunk History! Awesome. Okay, that's great. They can do that. I, I'm, I'm oh. better now. Thank so you. So she shows up. They yeah. start to see each other. They're, they are like, you know, he's like he's awkward. And she, I think she's like a couple, maybe a year older than him. Not much, but just a little bit older than him. I could be wrong about that. But I feel like, I mean, they're close in age. But he's kind of reserved. And yeah. he's the firstborn. And he wasn't as like ooh la la as Henry was, right? No, no. Harry. Harry the Harry Harry. Harry. So, Harry. unfortunately, they are, um, that's not unfortunate, but they get married, and then yeah. uh, Edward, uh, well, wait, Arthur, not Edward. Arthur, 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 not the Excalibur Arthur. Yeah, not the Excalibur, Arthur Tudor. Arthur takes Tudor. the bucket. <gasps> he just and died. They're married, they're married. They're married a very brief time, and he just kills over. Just like, oh, cr oh, God, I just, my heart. Uh, <coughs> I mean, he's in bed, but, you know, he's sick. He's got, like, the sweating sickness. Nobody's really sure what he has. Probably maybe tuberculosis, because that kills everyone. But who The knows? sweating sickness. So, like, you sweat to death? Yeah. It's like hydration. You get the fevers. You get the fevers. So that's terrible. The poor guy. He just got married and he's on his honeymoon and then he's oh my god, the poor guy. And guess what happens now? The poor girl! Oh my god, she's gonna be like Bye! She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. Because why? Because she's why? Fine. She's she's fine with this? I don't know about that, but she's fine. She's gonna be fine for at least a little while. She's okay. She, she, so for now, Arthur's dead, and that means Henry VII is really fucking upset because now he only has one male heir to the throne. And well, who's hey, that? Heir to spare is what you got, right? You got heir to spare, and that's important. Heir. It is. And that's spare. it. That's all he's got. Because his wife is dead now. She's gone Elizabeth now. Elizabeth has died. She's died at this point in childbirth. Oh, I'm oh, childbirth. That's so sad. Well, I think she dies like a few, like a few days afterwards. But you know that typically is what happens anyway. So because yeah. childbirth is, it's no joke. It's, it's a serious thing. business. It's a thing. I've heard, and I'm avoiding that myself. Thank you. Cats are great. Yeah. Love my cats. Yeah. My, I am, I am crotch goblin free. There you have it. Some choices in life allow you to be safer. Uh, <laughs> like my bed while I'm drinking. Uh, in the bed, so, talking about beverage, talking about history. Okay, good. So the poor little wood gir Woodwoodville girl dies. She's dead. So Henry, so Henry doesn't have can't he can't produce no more heirs, and he's old. -ish, what if he married you know? again? What if he married again? Could, was he just like really old and impotent at that point? I don't know that he was impotent, but he was older. And I think Elizabeth Woodville, or excuse me, not Elizabeth Woodville, but Elizabeth of York's death actually really sent him into a spiral of depression. Oh, he, he, he actually, he oh. became very fond of her. So um, at least that's- when you married and you produce a lot of babies. One would he, hope, one would hope. Yeah, well, one would hope. But yes. so- oh. So Henry is now the heir to the throne, and you know his. It, it's kind of it's 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 really actually sad for Henry the Seventh because in a fairly quick succession, Arthur dies, Elizabeth dies, and then his and then he, uh, he dies. Henry the Seventh dies is what I mean to say, and but then that, Margaret, and then Margaret Beaufort dies, who is the mother of Henry the Seventh and then the grandmother of Henry the Eighth. So, so, so if I'm Henry eventually the eighth if and i've had like this second born son free for all life like i'm cool i'm having a great time my brother he's gonna be the responsible one i get to be here and party with all the ladies who think i'm important 
I'm growing up in the castle. I'm learning French and Greek. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, this is awesome. I got the best life in the world. I'm the second born. <laughs> and then brother dies. Dad dies. Oh, wait, no, no. Uh, mom. mom dies. Mom. Dad dies. Mom dies. Grandma dies. Grandma dies. Grandma yeah. and then grandpa? Or is grandpa already gone? Grandpa's long gone. Grandpa's gone long. Okay, no grandpa. But like everybody's like falling off as if yeah. there's a virus or something around. And he's like 18 years old at this point. 17, 18, 18 years old. That poor guy. Oh my God. He's dealing with hormones and learning how to be a man. And all of his like chest hairs are coming out. And he's like, what is this? And He's like, all these, all this death is happening. The poor and guy. But he takes it in, in stride, right? Like, he comes out of it being, he wants to prove to England that he is much more uh, charismatic and uh, thoughtful compared to his father. So his father, people kind of view him as a crumb gudgeon or, you know, just sort of a grump. And also, like, a stingy... Oh, he decided to be but he's a grump. Yeah, like, they, 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 you know, he, he, I mean, when you steal the thrones from the Yorks, you become a grump because England hates you. That's just a known fact. He's a piece of prosperity and all those babies of both sides. They, he was still a grump. He was, he was terribly grumpy. He, well, I say that, I don't know. They, I read books that say <laughs> that he he's was not, friend. he wasn't pleasant to say the least. And so Henry wants Henry VIII, everybody, Henry VII is dead. Say goodbye to Henry VII when we refer to Henry at this point. It is Henry VIII. I am. I am. I so am. Henry is, he, he's going to prove his dad wrong. He gets coronated. He gets anointed with all that oil stuff. Oil. He, he frees people in prisons except for like heinous acts of murder. He lets them go. Um, he is like uh, rehabilitated. Just, I'm sure. I'm sure they've been all rehabilitated and they're nice people now. Sure, sure. I mean, it's medieval. It's medieval justice. So the likelihood that most of them really were bad people is probably slim as it is. True, but. true. Not the same justice system we have nowadays, which is so reliable. Yeah. Uh, we're okay, gonna leave anyway. politics out of this. This is history. We're just yeah, history. history politics. It's so much safer. Yes. Well, I mean, they're dead, so they can't write about us. Um, so, yeah. so Henry, what does he do? What did I say? Oh, oh, well, he's, he's trying, trying to be death part. The death part. Where everyone's dying, and Henry the Eighth is like, dude, I've got this. So interesting fact to me anyways or maybe not a fact but just a little tidbit so like Henry VIII wanted his court to be super ultra uh fashionable and very I don't want to say he wanted to say it was French but he wanted it to be very over the top yes very very cosmopolitan he wanted it to be the fanciest court you could possibly have you know whose court was that and he uh, tried to copy, but would never claim to it. Anybody want to say yes right now? That was the most beautiful court there ever was on mankind. Absolutely. Elizabeth I. That's his daughter. I don't think it works that way. Okay. But we're going to go back. Team York, Edward IV. He was Edward! Trying copy, he's trying to copy his granddaddy. <gasps> why oh, his grandpa was cool. Grandpa knew how to do it. He knew how to bring it with all the beautiful clothes and the people and the dance and yep. the music. Yep, yep. So Henry tried to copy uh, him. He wanted to be that right. guy. But you can't, uh, from the past, you can't say. Copy the past. You can't really look to the future and say, Elizabeth I, she had it right. You can't do that without no. the Doctor Who blue box thing. It's backwards. No. It don't work that way. Right, so, yeah. Just, you know. Okay. Cool. Okay, so Henry, he, 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 does, he does all those things. He but, makes it beautiful. But we're, we're forgetting about somebody. In all of this stuff that has just happened, Arthur is dead. And Catherine, Catherine is now a widow. And she, like, what does she do? Does she go back to Spain? I mean, what good is she to Spain, right? Because obviously Arthur and her had a little bit of relations, you would think, right? 
You would but, say, yeah, they got married and they had their relations as you do on that uh, first night when everybody's expecting it. I have right. bad news. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? I have, I have cheap, I have cheap booze over here. Well, that's good. Got, pineapple. Pineapple's good. And I got Malibu oh. and Coke. Oh, excellent. You're taken care of. Okay, good. Good. Me, All right. Me. You're okay. Yeah, I've got the sake. My favorite is the sake. You're not drinking nearly as much as I'm drinking. I do, do you see this? And this was just the second phase. I don't know that I believe you. Okay, I would get up and show you the very large bottle of um, the white stuff. I don't really remember what it's called. Maybe Moscato. Yeah, we got, we got to do, what, what, you don't have Moscato. What do you mean I don't have Moscato? This is an Italian household, girlfriend. The Moscato is right over there. Oh, okay. It's not open yet, though. Look at my nose. It's red. Anyway, so. It's a little pink. That's okay. So, Catherine has got to get married. And so. Yeah, she's got to find somebody that will marry her because she's kind of like, she's broken in, but I don't want to say she's used goods because she's not no. really that used. So She's we don't know because she swears up and down at this point that her and Arthur never consummated their marriage. So Henry is like, you know what? Maybe I could be down with that. Now Catherine's like five years older than Henry, I think, something like that. His brother's wife. Yes. And so there's that's this big insane. People are like, whoa, 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 that's incest. P.S., by the way, there was so much incest in medieval marriages. I cannot believe that the fact that your brother might have slept with someone that you would futurely sleep with is awful. But, you know, cool. I mean, whatever. I, I, can't help that. I can sleep with my I can sleep with my first cousin, and that's fine. Thank you, Habsburgs. But but no, no, no. Let's no. not sleep with somebody who's not actually related to us. No, I couldn't do that. that. I mean, my cousins are great, and they're wonderful people, and I love them. They're great guys, and they have wives and children. I could not. Ew! Oh! Ew! No! Just, ah! So, long story short, Henry and Catherine figure it out, and they decide they're going to get married. Henry asks Catherine to marry him. Um, I think it was like, 50, oh, Henry was crowned in April of like 1509, something like that. And uh, he asked Catherine to marry him in the middle of 1509. They get that worked out and they're married. And Catherine is crowned. They, do it. they, do it. they get married. They get Everybody's married okay and, with this. And, and I mean, they're not, not everybody is okay with it, but, but they got a dispensation from the Pope. And once the Pope says, Fuck yeah, this is all right. You can't really argue with that. Yeah, I mean, if the Pope is on your side, you're pretty much done, right? Yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. okay, I got the Pope here. See, Pope, Pope-ness letter says we're good. We're going to go ahead. Oh and my the God. Pope says you're good, you're good. And so yeah. they get married, and they're together like 30 years. But there is so much bullshit that happens from... The time they're married to the time, I don't want to give it away yet, but till later on, that it, it's unbelievable. It's just, it's crazy. So 30, married, years. 30 years of yeah. Catherine of Aragon and Henry VIII, 30, 30. I'm pretty sure it's 30. We, do we need to look it up to be sure? I feel like it is. Okay, wait, hang a second. Hang on, let me look. Let me see. It is almost 30 years. I'm not wrong. Okay. How long was Henry VIII married to? She mar He married Catherine in 1509, and he was divorced. He didn't divorce her till like 30 years later because of all the stuff that went on. Oh, my God. Under spouse, there's just this... <laughs> <laughs> Henry the Eighth and burial spouse. I can't, I, can't you, I can't give you an exact number of how many years they were together, but I'm going to start and just try to go really quickly through the Catherine issue. So Catherine and him like actually had a pretty solid marriage for a really long time. He entrusted her with ruling the kingdom when he would go to war. He 
trusted Catherine implicitly, and she was a really good queen, and she was beloved by England. They truly, truly loved her as a queen. The thing about Catherine, you got to remember, she's already five years older than Henry, and the first child that she announces that she's pregnant with um, is in 1509, the year they got married, but she loses that baby, and oh. it's daughter, so it's stillborn. And unfortunately for Catherine, after that, she had three more stillborns that were sons. So Henry did get his sons from her, but one of them died like a few days after, uh, or a month after childbirth. And then there were two more that were stillborn. She had another daughter, excuse me, she had another daughter that was stillborn. Then she had Mary, which is Bloody Mary, that's a completely different. You had to get to stillborn babies before Mary came along. Correct. And then finally, oh. there was one. And then there was one other after Mary, which was another daughter that was stillborn. So, so Catherine just didn't have the best. I mean, they just the best. Some, Something was wrong with Catherine, probably physically that she couldn't hold the child or or something, something wasn't right. I mean, let's be honest, medieval childbirth was not like top notch by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't easy, I fear. It's not I good mean. now, so I can't even imagine what it's like then. So, so she's struggling. Henry is getting more and more angsty because just like his father, he has to establish this male lineage to continue on this Tudor dynasty, this great, amazing Tudor dynasty. Because they're all about the men. We don't really believe in the women yet. They're going to, they will, but they're not there yet. Yeah, and so, 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 so Henry's moving along, right? And like all uh -huh, good kings, good kings, Henry gets a mistress and her name- As you do is Be fuck. Bessie Blount. That's her name. Bessie Blount. Blount. Bessie Blount? Are you kidding me? What kind of a name is Betsy Blount? It's allit all alliteration. Alliterative. Right? You're right. You're right. It is. Did I say that right? Betsy my Blount. Here, Henry. Let you uh, just come over and see Betsy. She's got a Blount for you. That's right. And so he mounts Bessie Blount. He mounts Bessie and, Blount. And he produces, guess what? A, a male boy. heir. A child. Uh, yes, not legal. You're right. You're right. But, but Henry is ready to declare this child, even though it's illegitimate, is ready to declare it heir because Catherine can't produce a child. And that baby's name is Henry Fitzroy, and he later becomes the Duke of Richmond. But he oh. died at 17 of tuberculosis, so hey, we're cool. No, no worries. No illegitimate children here for too long. The Duke of Richmond, that sounds important. I don't know. No, Duke? Like there was, was there one before that? I don't really remember anybody. Maybe he made that title up. I feel like he did. He probably made that title up because he was so happy to finally have a male heir. Yep. And he was like, I'm going to make up a title for you, boy. It's going to be really rich sounding. Let's just call it Richmond. So, so he, Richmond, yes, yes. He is going, he's got this male heir. Well, he, he's not really his heir yet, but he's like threatening it, right? Catherine is a little upset. I mean, you know, she takes it like a boss because as queen, you just take the hits on the chin and keep on going, right? You do that. You're like, fine, I'll see your male heir and raise you one or three. But at this time, it's about 1518, 1519. And the Bolin family is suddenly sort of roaming around. They've sent one of their daughters, Anne, Bolin to the French court. There are waiting for this. I knew the Bolins were gonna come in sometime. Their daughter, the other one, who apparently is the prettier one, Mary Bolin, has started being at court. And Henry has taken a little bit of a shine to Miss Mary Bolin, and she apparently becomes his mistress. 
Just like in the movie, right? I mean, the movie was great. Which one? The other Boleyn girl. Oh, it is good. Wait, the one? Yeah, that one's good. That one's good. In Hathaway? I mean... Is it in Hathaway? No, it's not in Hathaway. It's, uh... It's, uh... No. It's the girl from Star Wars. It's Padme. It the girl from Star Wars. Hey, Google, who played Anne Boleyn in The Other Boleyn Girl? Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman! On Wikipedia. Natalie on Portman! Anne Boleyn. All right. Sorry, didn't mean to... I mean, the Boleyns are just so bad. They're so bad as a family. Oh, they are extraordinarily political and they are looking to rise above their station so mary sort of fades into the distance at this time because anne is called back from france and she is now put into the service of catherine of aragon as what a freaking retainer or a lady in waiting as they call them Hello. the french girl comes back the english girl she goes to france and she comes back and she is now the lady in waiting of the queen. And the queen says, oh, mon dieu. Oh. There's all kinds of rumors that Anne is all like, hey, baby, I know all that dirty French bed stuff, so let's get down and do it that way. The French, they know. They know the ways. Yeah. They yeah. know the ways, and I know the ways, and I know the English ways and the French ways. I know all the ways, and we can bring them together to make you all the ways. She becomes... Catherine's lady in waiting during the time that Henry goes to have a meeting with Francis the first of France at the field of cloth and gold. And that's where Henry, Henry spent so much money trying to show that he was such a badass to, you know, there make Francis. tapestries made of that. I mean, the tapestries alone, ooh la la. Oh, is the pineapple not good? No. It's no Moscato. Ooh, it is no Moscato. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's all right. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, so, it's not like five stillborn children. It's mm. six. Wait, no, five. You're right. You counted right. I'm terrible. You said five. You told me five. I believe you. It's five stillborn, six kids total. Oh, yes, because so, one survived. One survived. Yeah, so, you can. You should drink more of that. You're, I'm you're working not, on it. I'm working on it. And so, good guy. Okay, so, so Clock of Gold sounds great. That sounds yeah. like the Penzig of the England and French time period. It sounds like a lot of money. There were like fountains that streamed wine out of it there. We could do that. Now, if it was more Moscato. We, so, should, we should do that. We should be like, fountain! All right, so during all this time, we have somebody that we haven't talked about very much, but we're going to talk about him now. 